In this video, I'm going to show you how to find limits algebraically. So we're going to use limit theorems or rules in algebra to find limits of polynomial, rational and radical functions. Let's get started. So the first problem, we want to find limit of a polynomial as x approaches negative 4. Since this is a polynomial, we can do direct substitution. So the limit of this one is just equal to negative 4 quantity squared minus 3 times negative 4 minus 8. And this is just equal to 16 plus 12 minus 8. So that is 28 minus 8 equal to 20. So the function values okay, of this function is approaching this number as x gets closer and closer to negative 4 from both direction, from the left and from the right. If we look at the graph of this function, just to confirm that this is the right limit here, so this is the graph of the uh, function y equals x squared minus 3x minus 8. So as we approach negative 4 from both sides, so as you can see, if I'm going to draw this one here, so the function value at negative 4 is equal to 20. And as we approach, let's say, negative 4 from the right, so the points are getting closer and closer to this point. Okay? And also, when we approach negative 4 from the left, the points are getting closer and closer to this point. So this point will give us the limit, which is the y-coordinate of this point. And the y-coordinate of that one is 20, which is actually the function value at negative 4. So this confirms the limit, which is equal to 20. Now let's move to the next problem. So in this case, we have a limit of the square root of the function in the previous problem as x approaches negative 4. So we know already that the limit of this expression inside, limit as x approaches negative 4, x approaches negative 4 of x squared minus 3x minus 8. We have computed that already in the previous problem, and this is equal to 20. So since this is a positive number, we can use a limit a theorem that the limit of the square root of a function is just equal to the square root of the limit if the limit is positive. So we can use that limit a theorem and we'll get here equal to square root of 20. Of course, we can simplify this. There is a perfect square factor, which is 4. So square root of 4 is equal to 2. So this is 2 square root of 5. So that is the limit of this function. If you look at the graph of uh, this uh, function here, this radical function, y equal to this one, this is the graph of that function. And as we approach uh, negative 4, so the function values, as we approach negative 4 from uh, both sides, so if we're going to use like a wall method to find uh, the limit, as you can see, as x approaches negative 4 from both sides, so here are the points on the graph. So the points are getting closer and closer to this point, and the y-coordinate of uh, this point is actually 2 square root of 5. So that is 4 point something, because the square root of 5 is 2 point something. So uh, uh, that is the limit of this radical function as x approaches negative 4. Next problem, so let's find the limit of this uh, rational function as x approaches uh, 3. We can immediately see that the denominator approaches 0 as x approaches a 3. So therefore, we cannot use quotient rule because the limit of the denominator is equal to 0. Now, how about the limit of the numerator? The limit of the numerator in this case is, uh, so x squared goes to 3 squared, and then x goes to 3, and then minus 12. So this is also equal to 0. So you have a limit of the form 0 over 0. So if you have such a limit, 0 over 0, the limit may or may not exist. The common mistakes in finding limits is to think that we can always do direct substitution. But we can do this if it is in the form 0 over 0. If it is in the form 0 over 0, there is a common factor between the numerator and denominator. And that common factor is actually x minus a. So x minus a in this case is x minus a 3. So this limit is equal to uh, limit as x approaches a 3 of, we factor out the numerator. You have here x minus a 3 and then x plus 4 all over uh, x minus a 3. So in this case, x is close to 3 but not equal to 3. So therefore, we can cancel this one here. Okay. So x minus a 3 over x minus a 3 is equal to 1. So this is just limit as x approaches a 3 of 
x plus 4. And uh, now, we're just computing for limit of a polynomial in this case. So limit is just the function value, which is in this case uh, 3 plus 4, and this is equal to 7. And if you look at the graph of this uh, rational uh, function, let's look at the graph. As you can see in this case, it's a line with a hole at x equal to 3. And uh, of course, uh, using, uh, uh, let's say, a wall method to find the limit here, so as we approach uh, 3 from both sides, so here are your points. So they're getting closer and closer to a specific point, this point here. Okay, and that point is actually what? Point uh, with y coordinate equal to uh, 7. So this is the limit. So this is the number that is approached by your function values or y values, y coordinates of the points here. So this confirms our answer that the limit is indeed equal to 7. Next problem. So we have here again limit of a rational function as x approaches 2. So before you do some uh, factoring, in this case, uh, uh, check first whether you can apply quotient rule or not. In this case, as you approach 2, then the denominator approaches 2 times 2 plus 1, which is equal to 5, and that is not equal to 0. So therefore, we can apply quotient rule in this case. And the limit is just what? The function value. So we have a, a theorem that if uh, this a here is in the domain of the rational function, in the domain means you have a function value, then the limit is just the function value at a. So we just do direct substitution here. So this is just equal to 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 5 all over 2 times 2 plus 1. Let's simplify this one. So 3 times 4, so that is 12, plus 4 minus 5 all over 5. So this is equal to 11 over 5, or equal to 2 and 1 over 5. So 2 and 1 over 5, so that is 2.2. Now, uh, let's look at the graph of this rational function. So the graph of this rational function is this one. So if we approach 2 from both sides, as you can see, the points are getting closer and closer to that point, to this point here, okay? And what is the y-coordinate of this point? So the y-coordinate of this point is this one, which is actually 2 and 1 over 5. So this confirms that the limit is indeed 2 and 1 over 5. Next problem. So here we have limit as x approaches 1 of this rational expression again, but this time the limit of the denominator is equal to 0. Now how about the limit of the numerator? The limit of the numerator is, you have here 3 plus 2 minus 5, it's also equal to 0. So this is in the form 0 over 0. So same as in a previous problem. So here we just factor out the numerator and denominator. And what is the common factor? The common factor is x minus 1. So that is already a hint when you factor out the numerator or the denominator. So in this case, it is clear that the factors of the denominator are 4 and x minus 1. And our numerators, if one of the factors is x minus 1, then the other factor is 3x plus 5. And you can check by FOIL method that when you add the outer and inner product, you'll get positive 2x. So now we cancel the common factor. Again, x is close to 1, but not equal to 1. So we can cancel x minus 1 and x minus 1. So this is just equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of 3x plus 5 all over 4. So this is just a polynomial. So the function value at 1 exists in this case. This is a polynomial, so the limit is just the function value. So this is equal to 3 times 1 plus 5 all over 4, which is equal to 8 over 4, so that is equal to 2. And if you look at the graph of this rational function, as you can see here, so as we approach 1 from both sides, the points are getting closer and closer to this point. So they are approaching a specific point, so we have a limit. And the y-coordinate of that point is your limit, so the y-coordinate here is equal to 2. So therefore, the limit of this rational expression as x approaches 1 is equal to 2. Next problem. So let's find the limit of uh, 2x plus 10. 
over x squared minus 25 as x approaches negative 5. So again, if we do direct substitution here, you'll see that uh, you'll get a limit in the numerator 0 and also for the denominator. So this tells you again that you have to do factoring to get rid of the common factor. And the common factor will be x minus negative 5. So that is uh, x plus 5. So this is uh, limit as x approaches uh, negative 5 of difference of two squares, x squared minus 25. So you can factor that out as x minus 5, x plus 5. The numerator, so you have here 2 times uh, x plus 5. And again, you cancel the common factor. And you'll get here limit of as x approaches negative 5 of 2 over x minus 5. So this is a rational function. And negative 5 is in the domain of this rational function. So we can do direct substitution. So you can just plug in that negative 5 for x to find the limit. So we'll get here 2 over negative 5 minus 5, which is equal to negative 2 over 10 or equal to negative 1 over 5. And if you look at the graph of this rational function, as you can see, as we approach negative 5, okay, from both sides, so the function values are getting closer and closer to this value here, which is negative 0 0.2. That is the same thing as negative 1 over 5. Moving to our last problem, so we have here limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4. Again, when you do direct substitution here, you'll get a limit, which is square root of 4 minus 2. So that is 0 over 0. So in this case, uh, you need to do something to determine whether the limit exists or not. So one way to evaluate uh, this uh, expression is uh, by doing rationalization. Rationalization means uh, you're going to get rid of uh, the radical symbol. So you have to rationalize the numerator here. And when you do rationalization, you'll see that uh, we'll be able to produce the common factor, which is uh, x minus 4. So let's try to do that one. So to rationalize this one, we multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of x plus 2 all over square root of x plus 2, which is equal to limit as x approaches 4 of so you have here a special product in the numerator. So you have square of square root of x, so that is x, and then minus the square of 2, so that is 4, all over. So we just write this denominator in factored form. And as you can see, the common factor is x minus 4. So we cancel this uh, common factor here, 1, 1, and the limit is just equal to limit as x approaches 4 of 1 over square root of x plus 2. And as x approaches 4, square root of x goes to square root of 4. So in this case, we can just do a direct substitution. So you have here 1 over square root of 4 and then plus 2, which is equal to 1 over 2 plus 2. So that is equal to 1 fourth. Let me show you a different way to evaluate this limit. So instead of doing rationalization, so we're going to just do a factoring in this case. So we evaluate this limit as x approaches 4 of square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 just by factoring. So if you think of this uh, denominator here as a difference of two squares, it is like square root of x quantity squared minus 2 squared. So it's difference of uh, two squares, then you can factor it out from algebra as, uh, so this is limit as x approaches 4 of, you have here square root of x plus 2, and then square root of x minus 2. And then you have in the numerator square root of x minus 2. So it is clear you have a common factor here, which is square root of x minus 2. So we cancel that common factor. And we'll get here limit as x approaches 4 of 1 over square root of x plus 2. And again, we can do direct substitution. And we'll get 1 over 4. So just to confirm this answer, if you look at the graph of this function here, so as x approaches 4 from both sides, so as you can see, the function values are getting closer and closer to this value, which is equal to 1 over 4. So this confirms our solution.